Well, I hope you guys don't mind staying late today. You guys already missed the football game. So we could do one of those Paul four-hour sermons. How does that sound? I already see people getting ready to get up and leave then. Well, if you have your notes, take them out. Take a good long look at them and then put them away because we are not going to be using them today. I'm sorry uh, to Danny. Yeah, he's going to kill me later because we are not going to be going by these notes. These will be for next week. And uh, I always tell, you, tell the uh, translators to leave room for the Holy Spirit. So Danny, I hope you're listening. If you have your Bibles, open them up to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. We're going to be looking at verses 36 to 50 today. And I just want to ask you a couple questions real quick to start off, and I want us to be completely open and honest with ourselves. And I know I say it quite often, but it's worth saying, is the person that we lie to the most is ourself. It seems like our spouse can always see right to us and cut us to the quick and be able to know whether we're being completely honest. How is your day today? Oh, I'm doing good. No, you're not. Let's sit and talk. So I want you to be completely open and honest when you're answering this question. Have you considered your life as a fragrant aroma to our Lord? Do you consider your life as a sacrifice given unto Him? Do you consider your life being lived not for yourself, but for the Lord Jesus Christ? In Leviticus 2.15, the people were to give offerings of incense. Offerings is a sweet smell unto the Lord. Something that would be burnt unto him and come and hit him. And so he would smell it. He would smell that sweet, fragrant aroma. And it would be a reminder to the people and to the Lord of the forgiveness that came with sacrifice. Every time they would smell that smell, every time they would burn an offering in their house, it would be a reminder of the forgiveness that comes in God. And so I ask you today, are you a fragrant aroma? Are you a reminder of the forgiveness that comes in Christ? Are you a reminder to others of the forgiveness that comes through Jesus? Are you a fragrant aroma back up to God, thanking Him for the sacrifice that He did for you that we just celebrated and remembered. It was a symbol, that sacrifice, that Levitical sacrifice of all that we do in this world. That horrible, foul rottenness of sin that sits on us could be just taken away from taken away, separated from us by God. His forgiveness is like a sweet-smelling, fragrant offering. The smell of humility is something beautiful. Someone coming to their knees and asking forgiveness is like a sweet, fragrant aroma to our God. And that's what we're called to be. That's what we're called to be. And that's what was remembered by that smell. Was the forgiveness that came. Open your Bibles, like I said, to Luke chapter 7. And let's read verses 36 to 50. It says, Now one of the Pharisees was requesting him to dine with him. And he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. 
And there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. And when she had learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with her hair and kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. And Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he replied, say it, teacher. Verse 41, a money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they were unable to repay, he graciously forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have judged correctly. Turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I have entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. For this reason, I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little forget, loves little. Then he said to her, your sins have been forgiven. Those who were reclining at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this man who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You see, this woman's life represented her offering. She was known, really, as a woman of the night, a prostitute. Her life was devoted to sin. It was her way of making money. It was her way of paying her bills. It was her way of eating every day. In general, just providing for herself was this. Being stuck in this type of life. And because of that, people looked down on her. But here, in view of a loving and merciful God, she lays all before Him. She lays everything of herself at His feet in sorrow, grief, and pain. She holds nothing back knowing that she's standing before God in flesh. You see, she saw her place. She entered the room and took what Mark 14, 5 says was over $300 worth of denarii in a small little vial, as it said in our, our verse. She takes that fragrant aroma, that perfume, $300 worth, and breaks it at the feet of Christ and anoints him with it. It says in Mark that it would have been over a year's worth of wages poured on the head of the Christ. $300 worth of wages. First Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. It starts talking about after she had done that, she began to wipe his feet with her hair 
What's so significant about that? Well, this woman had nothing left in her life. She was basically living as a prostitute to make money, to feed herself, to have a place to stay. The only thing that she would have had that had some value to her as a woman would have been her hair. And that's why Jesus says it's so important in that part when he says she's been weeping over my feet and wiping my feet with her hair. We get a glimpse of the importance of hair in 1 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14, and 15. It says, does not even nature itself teach you that a man, if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him. But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her. For her hair is given to her as a covering. The last thing that this woman had of worth, she's using on the feet of the Savior. The one thing this woman could glory in herself over, she is wiping the feet of the Savior. She took the little honor she did have, whatever little glory she had left, and used it to wipe the feet of Jesus. What are those feet? Well, Isaiah, the prophet, in verse, uh, chapter 52, verse 7, it says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation. And say to Zion, your God reigns. The feet of God. The feet of God. The beautiful feet of God. And she's wiping the feet of God who reigns. She showered them with her tears, her kisses, her expensive perfume. And offered it up as an offering. Why is this so important? Well, you look back at the verse that we were looking at. You look back at Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. When he answers the man, Simon, he says, You gave me no water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not greet me with a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. You see, the custom of the time was when you had an honored guest enter into your home. Someone that you saw as important or more important than you. Not just a common guest. Not when the family knocks on the door and says, hey, guess what, we're coming over for dinner. Not that type. When you invited someone as an honored guest at your house, you'd greet them with a double kiss. You'd come up to them and you'd give them that double kiss. That hello of, you are important in this house. I am honoring you. You would take olive oil and anoint their head. You would have a servant come, and sometimes even the host would do this, but you would at least have a servant come and have them sit and wash their feet from the journey that was taking place. Remember, they wore sandals a lot of times going from place to place, and there was dust and, and just sand everywhere, and so their feet would be filthy. And so as they reclined at your table, which was low to the ground, their feet would be exposed to you, and you don't want to be looking at dirty feet at your table but it was a thing of honor to do, to wash the feet of your guest or have your servant wash the feet of your guest as a sign of humility and who that person was to you. But Simon had done none of these things. He saw himself as either a higher up or an equal with Christ. 
He wouldn't submit himself lower and, 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 and come up to Christ and, and give him the kiss and anoint his head or wash his feet. In other words, he saw that he was entertaining just a mere friend. Just a mere friend. And some of us might be like Simon. Some of us might be like Simon here tonight, today. And instead of laying down everything at the feet of Jesus... Instead of seeing the greatest possessions that we have in life as His and His alone. We might just be entertaining. You're not giving Him your all and your best. You're not coming to the Savior of the world and just laying it all before Him. And saying, Lord, I am your sweet sacrifice. Use me. Lord, I am not worthy to be at your feet, but here I am. Do what you may. Instead, we're looking at him as an equal in our life. Like a Simon. And we're saying, yeah, Jesus is my friend. Instead of laying it all at his feet. You're not giving him your best. You're just entertaining. Take a look at Ephesians 5.2. It says, And walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. And he did this as an offering and a sacrifice to God. As a fragrant aroma. You see, our life can be that of Christ where we offer ourselves back as a fragrant aroma as well. That perfume at the feet of Christ coming up, filling the room with that smell of forgiveness that Jesus gave to that woman that very day. You see, a lot of times, as Jesus said here, those who have been forgiven little love so little. But those who have been forgiven much, they love much. A lot of times in our life and our relationship with Jesus, we forget where we came from. We lose sight of where we came from. And instead of filling the room with that smell, that fragrant smell, that aroma of forgiveness and that aroma of grace and love and mercy, we come into a room and we fill it with the smell of judgment, the smell of condemnation, the smell of looking down upon others. When Jesus wants us to be a fragrant aroma offered up to him. What are you holding on to in your life, in your relationship with Christ? What are you putting in front of the Savior? What are you offering Him as His fragrant aroma? Of that smell of forgiveness that every time He looks down on you, He says, that is my child. And you can smell that forgiveness in their life that they're sharing with others that's going out there every single time when people look at them, they see me. They see me. They see my grace. They see my forgiveness. They see my love. They see my mercy. That's my child. And with them comes the smell of fragrant aroma because they remember the sacrifice of me. We need to look at the Lord not as just a a friend, not just as uh, someone that we see as an equal, and a lot of times we do that as Simon. We need to come before the Lord as as the, the woman in this picture here, this Mary who comes before the Lord and she gives his her all. She holds nothing back. 
She knows she's a sinner. She knows that she's broken. She knows that everybody else sees her as worthless. And the truth is, before the feet of the Savior, we all are. Whether we're a Simon or whether we're a Mary, we are all sinners. But Jesus sees the sacrifice of a person sees the humility of a person coming before his feet and saying, I am nothing without you. Lord, use me. That's the greatest sacrifice. Are you going to be the Mary who lays it all before his feet and says, Lord, just use me how you will. Lord, I'm poured out at your feet. Lord, I have nothing left to offer Anything I could have hung my hat on are at your feet. The glory of my own hair is at your feet, wiping the dust and sand and dirt of this life off of your feet. Lord, I give it all to you and hold nothing back. What are you holding from the Lord? Place it at his feet. I want to end with a song. I know this is totally different. We've never done something like this before, but Natalie, I don't know if you found it. It's called Alabaster. It was written by a band called Wren Collective. And as we sing it, I want you to think of the words that are being said here. I want you to think of the the sacrifice of this woman coming before the Lord, holding nothing back. Anything that she could have hung her hat on, she just laid it all right there at his feet. Was seeking forgiveness, was seeking grace, was seeking his mercy, was seeking his love. And do the same in your own life. Sing it with me if you would. Let's all stand. I am broken at your feet Like an alabaster jar Every piece of who I am Laid before your majesty, and I will bow, and I will bow my life at your feet, at your feet. My lips, my lips, so lost for words, will kiss your feet, kiss your feet. Oh, the gravity of you draws my soul unto its knees. I will never be the same. I am lost and found in you. And I will bow my life at your feet. At your feet, my lips, my lips, so lost for words, will kiss your feet, kiss your feet, and I will bow, and I will bow my life at your feet, at your feet. My lips, so lost for words, will kiss your feet, kiss your feet. Amen. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And I know I preach it a lot. 
but it lets us know what a true heart of worship, a true sacrifice is. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God. Maybe you don't do things in your life that seem acceptable, and we don't. A lot of times we don't. We don't honor God with our bodies. We don't do the things that we should. And we do a lot of things that we shouldn't. But the forgiveness you have in Christ, he sees you as acceptable in his child. Present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Pour out your life as a fragrant aroma to him. Hold nothing back. Lay it at his feet. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Your life can be that fragrant aroma. Your life can be, even though the shattered pieces, a beautiful sacrifice lived for him. No one here on earth is perfect. We're all on the same boat. Imperfect people serving a perfect Lord. Sinners saved by grace. The beauty of grace is that we can be pieced together in his name. And he will use us broken people to share his gospel, to be a light into this world, to be a fragrant aroma, sharing his name. Brothers and sisters, let's do this together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for being such a wonderful and awesome God. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to live as a fragrant aroma to you. That the smell of you in our lives would fill a room, Lord. And people would look at us and see the difference you have made in our lives. Lord, that the perfume from the grace that we're sharing would spread, Lord. That your mercy and your grace and your love would be what people see in our lives. They would see us for what we had been, just like, just like Mary, Lord. They would see us for what we used to be, but for what we can be now in you. And who we become because of Christ. Christ. 